being yourself. Which three adjectives would you use to describe your personality? I would describe my personality as adaptable, empathetic, and curious. Are you shy or outgoing? When are you most outgoing? I fall somewhere in between being shy and outgoing. I am most outgoing when I am with close people. Are you daring or cautious? In what ways? I would describe myself as a mixture of both daring and cautious, depending on the situation and context. Are you usually patient or impatient? Can you give an example? I would describe myself as generally patient, but there are certain situations that can test my patience. Are you quiet or talkative? When are you most talkative? In social settings, I would describe myself as generally talkative rather than quiet. Would you call yourself a leader or a follower? Why? I would describe myself as a bit of both, depending on the situation and context. Are you generous or selfish? Are you too selfish or over generous? Overall, I strive to be a generous individual while also practicing self awareness and self care. In what ways are you rigid? I can be rigid when it comes to following a schedule or sticking to a plan. In what ways are you flexible? I'm flexible in adapting to change, working with others, and time management. In what ways are you traditional? I'm traditional about family values, cultural celebrations, and courtesy and manners. In what ways are you modern? I consider myself modern in terms of how I interact with technology and adapt to contemporary trends. Are you pessimistic or optimistic? I consider myself more of an optimist. Is your personality more like your mother or your father? In what ways? My personality is a blend of traits from both my mother and my father. Which color would you use to describe your personality? I would use the color blue to describe my personality. Which animal would you use to describe yourself? Tiger or mouse? I would lean towards describing myself as a tiger. Do you believe in astrology? Which sign are you in the zodiac? I am a Cancer, but I do not necessarily believe in astrology. Does the pattern of your zodiac sign match your personality? I feel that sign aligns with certain aspects of my personality. Which animal year are you according to Chinese astrology? Does it fit? I'm a tiger. Have you ever taken a personality test from a magazine or online? Yes, I have taken a personality test from both magazines and online platforms. Which season of the year best describes your personality? If I were to associate my personality with a season, I would say that I am most like spring. Do you think our personalities are set when we are born? In my opinion, personalities are not entirely predetermined at birth. Can we change our personalities? How? Yes, we can change it. Self-awareness and setting goals are some aspect that can help to do it. How has your personality changed in the last ten years? Of course, yes, it has changed a lot. Which three words would you use to describe the personality of your best friend? I would say loyal, empathetic, and hardworking. How are your personalities similar and different? I am more introverted, while my best friend is more extroverted. Why do you think opposites are sometimes attracted to each other? Complementary qualities, curiosity, and learning, and balancing effect are some factors. Would you say you are primarily air, water, fire, or earth? I might say that I see myself as primarily water. Which three qualities do you think of as yin, feminine? Nurturing, intuitive, and compassionate. Which three qualities do you think of as yang, masculine? Assertiveness, independence, and competitiveness. Can you name one yin quality and one yang quality which describe you? One yin quality that describes me is introspective, and one yang is ambitious. How might being raised in poverty influence someone's personality? Being raised in poverty can have a profound impact on someone's personality and development. Do you think being born in extreme wealth would change your personality? How? Being born into extreme wealth could potentially impact a person's personality in several ways. Can you think of somebody with a good personality and bad character? Yes, my friend Albert is like that.
What is the difference between one's personality and one's character? Personality refers to a person's behavior. Character refers to a person's moral and ethical qualities. Are you primarily an extrovert or an introvert? Why do you say that? I would consider myself more of an introvert. I enjoy spending time alone, reading, or simply reflecting on my day. Do you think nature or nurture are more important in shaping our personalities? Both nature and nurture contribute to our personality, and it's challenging to determine which one is more important. What are you best qualities? I think diligence, adaptability, and empathy are my best qualities. Staying healthy. What are some signs of being healthy? Some signs of being healthy include physical fitness and balanced diet. What do your friends or relatives do to stay healthy? They exercise, go for walks, and ride bikes. What do you do to stay healthy? I go to the gym and go jogging. Have your health habits changed in the last few years? How? Yes, I have become more conscious of the importance of maintaining a healthy lifestyle. What is something that many people should do but don't do to stay healthy? One thing people should do but often neglect to stay healthy is exercise two or three times a week. Do you know any home remedies for common ailments? Yes, for example, drinking warm honey and lemon water can provide relief for a cough. How do you treat a sore throat? Gargling with warm salt water can help soothe a sore throat and reduce inflammation. What are some causes of back pain, and what are some possible remedies? Back pain can be caused from muscle strain or poor posture. Taking a break from activities can help the back heal. Do you take daily vitamins? Which ones and why? Yes, I take daily vitamins as part of my health routine. I normally take vitamin B and D. Do you regularly take over-the-counter drugs or prescription drugs? Why? No, I don't. Is there a disease or condition which is common in your family? Thankfully, we have been fortunate to have relatively good overall health. How often do you wash your hands? What other precautions do you take to prevent the spread of germs? I make an effort to wash my hands regularly during the day to maintain good hygiene and prevent the spread of germs. Do you eat healthy food? Do you have any unhealthy eating habits? I try my best to eat healthy food and maintain a balanced diet. Do you enjoy smoking? What are some of the dangers of smoking? I don't like smoking. It can cause lung damage and heart disease. How much sleep do you usually get? Is your sleep restful, or do you toss and turn? On average, I usually aim to get around seven to eight hours of sleep each night. How often do you feel tired or exhausted? What can you do to feel more energetic? I occasionally feel tired or exhausted, especially when I have busy days with numerous tasks and responsibilities. Do you exercise regularly? What are your favorite exercises? Yes, I try to exercise regularly to stay active and maintain a healthy lifestyle. Jogging is my favorite. Do you take regular walks? Ride a bike? Go to the gym? Or do yoga? I go for walks and go to the gym. What can cause stomachache? Do you eat quickly? Do you eat spicy foods? Stomachaches can be caused by digestive issues, food poisoning, or overeating. Do you find yourself worrying a lot? Do you have ulcers? No, I don't. Do you keep track of your blood pressure or cholesterol? How? Yes, I do keep track of my blood pressure and cholesterol levels. What are some warning signs for a heart attack? What do doctors recommend? Chest pain or discomfort, shortness of breath, and cold sweats are some warnings. Doctors recommend calling emergency services right away if you suspect a heart attack. How is general health care easier in the United States than in your home country? General health care in the United States might be considered easier in some aspects compared to my country. What inoculations or medical test did you get before entering the United States? I got inoculation for measles, mumps, rubella, hepatitis, and varicella. Are there diseases that are common in your native country but are rare in the United States? No, they aren't. Are there common diseases in the U.S. which are rare in your homeland? I really don't know. Have you ever been to a hospital? Why? Yes, I have. I broke a leg last year. Are you at your ideal weight? 
Should you gain or lose weight to attain your ideal? Actually, I need to lose around 25 pounds. Do you restrict your diet for health reasons? How and why you do it? No, I don't. But I try to eat as healthy as possible. Have you seen TV ads for prescription drugs? Do you trust the ads? Yes, I have seen TV ads for prescription drugs. Do our emotions and thoughts affect our health? How? Yes, our emotions and thoughts can significantly affect our health. Do you follow any regimen like mediation, yoga, or prayer to calm your mind? Yes, I follow a regimen to calm my mind and promote well-being. It include meditation, yoga, and prayer. What three things could you do to improve your general health? Regular exercise, balanced diet, and adequate sleep. Please like and subscribe. Making and keeping friends. Did you have a best friend when you were eight years old? Yes, I did. I had a best friend when I was eight years old. What did you do together? Can you describe your best friend? We played volleyball and basketball every day. She is an outgoing person. Who was your best friend when you were 14? What did you do? When I was 14, my best friend was Mary. We rode bikes and played video games. Are you still friends or pals with the best friends of your youth? Yes, I am. We talk very often. Why do best friends sometimes drift apart? The interests, priorities, and life paths may change. What are some tips for keeping a friendship strong? It requires a delicate blend of empathy, communication, and mutual respect. Who is your best friend now? How did you meet your best friends? My best friend is Mike, and I met him at the university. What activities do you do with your friend? What make this friendship special? Well, my friend and I engage in a variety of activities that make our friendship truly special. What do you and your best friend have in common? We share a common sense of humor, and we love to read, explore new topics, and challenge ourselves intellectually. How are you and your best friend different? My best friend and I are different in many ways, both in terms of our personalities and our interests. Have you seen the TV show Friends? Do you like it? Who is your favorite character? Yes, I have seen the TV show Friends. I enjoy it because it's funny. My favorite character is Phoebe Buffay. Can you think of a good movie about friendship? Girls trip about four friends from college go on a wild trip to New Orleans for a weekend of fun. In your opinion, are there rules for a friendship? To trust each other, respect each other's opinions, and have good communication. What are some things that a good friend should do? A good friend should be supportive, honest, and be loyal. Are there things that a good friend should not do? Good friends should not gossip about you behind your back, make you feel bad, or use you or take advantage of you. Do you think you are a good friend to others? In what ways? Yes, I am. I am always there for my friends, no matter what, and I am always willing to offer support to them. Do you think friends should loan each other money? Why or why not? Yes, but only lend money that you can afford to lose. How do you deepen friendships? Can you share five tips for making and keeping friends? Be a good listener. Be supportive. Be honest and trustworthy. Be yourself and spend time together. Which of your friends would make good roommates? Why? Mike, because he is trustworthy, respectful, and communicative. Do you have any friends that you would not want as roommates? No, I don't have. Why do fast friends often form in crisis situation? Because people shared experiences, mutual need, time pressure, and increased vulnerability. How do you meet new friends? Do you have any tips for making friends? Well, you should put yourself out there, be yourself, be a good listener, and be positive and friendly. How do you keep in touch with friends? Set aside time for regular check-ins. Be intentional with your communication and share things that your friends will enjoy. Do you use instant messaging with friends? Yes, I do. I use it every day. Have you ever Googled a friend, coworker, or date? No, I haven't. Do you think that people of the opposite sex can be friends? Of course, yes. Have you ever had a good friend of the opposite sex? Yes, I have many good friends of the opposite sex. 
Do you think one can truly be friends with former romantic partners? I believe that is possible to truly be friends with an ex. Do you know a married couple who are best friends? Yes, my friends Kathy and Jason. Have you ever felt betrayed by a friend? How did you react? Yes, I have ever felt betrayed by a friend. Do you think it is fair to judge people by their friends? Why? No, I think is not fair. Do you have a close circle of friends? What unites you? Yes, I do have a close circle of friends. We are all students at the same university, and we met in our first year. Can one be friends with one's parents? Why or why not? I think is normal for parents and children to be friends these days. Please like and subscribe. Parenting. Where are you in your family's birth order? I am the firstborn in my family. How old were your parents when you were born? My mom was 24 and my dad 28 years old. Did your parents ever live with their parents? No, they didn't live with their parents. When you were a baby, who was your primary caretaker? My mother was it. What activities do you remember doing with your mother? We used to enjoy reading books together and going on walks in the park. What activities do you remember doing with your father? Playing catch in the backyard, going on fishing trips, and attending sports events. Do you remember playing with your parents? What did you play? We enjoyed board games like Monopoly and Scrabble, and outdoor activities such as playing catch or flying kites. When you were a child, were you ever punished? During my childhood, I was indeed subject to punishment on occasion. Which of your parents was the main disciplinarian in your family? My father was the main one. Were rules different for girls than for boys? Yes, rules were often different for girls than for boys in the past. What about family expectations for girls and boys? Family expectations for girls and boys can vary depending on the culture, religion, and status of the family. Do you remember helping either of your parents with chores? Which ones? Yes, I remember helping my parents with chores. I helped them with tasks like washing dishes and taking out the trash. Do you know any parents that hovered over their children like helicopter? Why or why not? I don't personally know any parents who hovered over their children like helicopters. What did your parents expect from you as a teenager? Did you rebel? My parents expected me to focus on my studies, be responsible, and make wise decisions. Which parenting duties do you think your parents did well? They were good at providing emotional support and listening to me when I had concerns or problems. What would you like to change about the way your parents treated you as a child? A teenager? I wish they had given me more freedom and trusted me to make my own decisions. Are you close with your father or mother now? What do you do together? I have a close relationship with either my father or mother. Do you resemble either of your parents? How? I have my father's eyes and my mother's sense of humor. What are you grateful to your parents for? I am grateful to them because they have always supported me and provided for my needs. Are you especially close with any of your siblings? What do you do together? Yes, I am quite close to younger brother. We often go out for walks, watch movies, and play board games. Are you estranged from any of your siblings? Why? No, I am not. Do you have kids? How old are they? Yes, I have a five years old son. Can you briefly describe each of your children? What do they like to do? He is very naughty and a little adamant too. He loves to love and to be loved. Do you want children? How many? Maybe I would have another. In what ways do you hope to repeat the parenting skill of your father and mother? I would like to learn from their patience and support, and create a loving and nurturing environment for my kids. How would you describe your father and mother's parenting style? I can describe it as caring and supportive. Are there also ways you hope to be a better parent than your parents? How? Reflecting on their parenting style, I aim to incorporate certain adjustments in my approach to raising children. When, if ever, do you discipline your children? What are some methods of discipline? I think exploring different methods of discipline like 
Timeouts, loss of privileges and natural consequences. How do parents sacrifice for their children? Why isn't this always appreciated? These sacrifices can be financial support, time investment, emotional care, and personal aspirations. What do you think is the ideal age for parents to be? Why? I believe the ideal age for parents to be is a subjective matter that can vary from person to person. In what way is it easier to be a parent 40 years ago? How was it more difficult? I think it might have been easier to be a parent 40 years ago. What are some problems that parents face today? Balancing work and family life, financial stress, technology and screen time, and work life flexibility. What are some good mistakes that parents sometimes make? Overprotectiveness, micromanaging, and ignoring mistakes. What are some of the satisfactions of being a parent? Unconditional love, joy of witnessing growth and memorable moments. What movies have touched you by their depiction of parents and children? The Pursuit of Happiness, Boyhood, and the Joy Luck Club. How would you describe an ideal father? Ideal mother? An ideal father is someone who embodies qualities of responsibility, support, and guidance as a figure of strength and protection. What five qualities would you like your children to have? In my opinion, empathy, resilience, curiosity, integrity, and self confidence. Can you share your top five tips for being a loving parent? In my opinion, communication, understanding, empathy, and led by example. What's a spin class? Hello, welcome to Center City Gym. I'm Cindy. Hi, Cindy. My name's Andrea, and I'm new here. Can you give me information about the gym? Sure. I can give you a tour of the gym and explain the gym rules. Great. That would be very helpful. First, when you arrive at the gym, you have to show your membership card. People who don't have a membership card have to pay $10 for each visit. I have a membership card, but what if my husband and children want to come? We love to have families join. However, children have to be at least 14 years old to use the gym. Oh, I see. What about young children? We have a child care center. Kids love it. A parent has to make a reservation, though. Okay. In the gym, everyone has to wear sneakers. You can't wear sandals or high heels. That's not safe for the gym. That makes sense. Let me show you the weight room. You should use a towel to clean the machines after you use them. And of course, you should put all weights and exercise equipment back after you use them. That's a lot of rules. I don't think I'll use the weight room much. Over here, we have rooms for exercise classes. All exercise classes are free. We have yoga, aerobics, tai chi, and dance classes. You have to bring your own mat to do yoga. And in this room, we have bikes for spin classes. What's a spin class? In a spin class, everyone rides a bike. An instructor leads you through a workout. It's great exercise. I prefer to ride my bike outside. I like to get fresh air. Well, try a spin class when it's raining outside. You might enjoy it. Do I have to sign up for the classes? No, but you should come about 10 minutes before the class starts. The gym also has personal trainers, they can help you exercise and eat well. Cindy, thank you for the tour and the information. What's the problem? Good morning. This is Bradley Pointer, and you're listening to this week's edition of Solve Your Problem. Today, we're talking about shopping problems. Our first caller today is Samantha. Samantha, tell us about your shopping problem. Hi, Bradley. My problem is Lakeview Flea Market and the parking lot. Okay, tell our listeners about it. Well, on Saturdays, it's very crowded. There are cars driving everywhere, and no one is directing traffic. 
That sounds stressful. It is. Another problem is that the parking spaces are too small. My car gets scratched every time I visit the flea market. Samantha, we will check out these problems. Thank you. Our next caller is Henry. Henry, what kind of shopping problem do you have? Hi, Bradley. I'm having a problem with Electronic Superstore. Okay, what's the problem? Well, I bought a new TV there last week. The sound didn't work. The TV was too quiet. What happened next? I tried to return it to Electronic Superstore. There were too many people in line. I waited in line 45 minutes. Then the cashier said I couldn't return the TV. I had to take it home and contact the company that made it. Now I have to take it to a repair shop. Henry, we are going to call Electronic Superstore about your problem. Next, I have Margaret on the phone. Margaret, tell us what problem you had. Thanks for taking my call. I ordered a dress from a trendy boutique. When I got home, I decided it was too expensive, so I returned it. Then I got my credit card statement. There was still a charge for the dress on my card. Margaret, you should call your credit card company right away. The show will talk to the boutique. Well, that's all the calls we have time for this week. Next week, our topic will be dating problems. Tune in then. First Date Horrors Hello, I'm Adam Garza. Welcome to the program. Today, listeners are sharing their first date horror stories. It seems like a lot of things can go wrong out there. I'm glad that I'm already married. Our first caller today is Bonnie. Bonnie, tell us about your bad date. Well, I started emailing a guy on an online dating site. I'll call him Jake, but that's not his real name. His profile had an attractive photo. I prefer men who are muscular. I play sports, so I like men who are athletic, too. After a few weeks, we decided to meet in the park. When he arrived, I didn't even recognize him. Really? Why not? Well, Jake didn't look at all like his picture. He was bald, short, and not very muscular. On his profile, he used a picture that was outdated. The date ended quickly. Bonnie, thanks for sharing your dating story. Next, we have Gary on the phone. Gary, tell us your story. Hi, Adam. I like women who are intelligent. I also prefer outgoing women. I'm a busy attorney, so I don't have a lot of time to meet people. A friend arranged a date for me with Vera. Vera was beautiful and definitely outgoing. In fact, she was very talkative. She never stopped talking during the date. I didn't see Vera again after our date. Gary, that sounds like a terrible date. Our final caller today is Emily. Emily, tell us about your bad first date. Okay, I work in a bookstore, and this cute guy started talking to me. He's an artist. I really like guys who are artistic. We decided to meet for coffee the next day. I waited 30 minutes in a crowded coffee shop. He finally arrived. He said that he had lost his car keys. Then, after he ordered coffee, he said he had forgotten his wallet. I had to pay for our first date. Your first date? Emily, did you go out with him again? That's the funny part. I really like him, and we're still dating. What happened? Hi, Brett. I haven't seen you in the office for a while. Where have you been? Hi, Julie. Holly and I got married last month. Oh? Did you go on a honeymoon? Yes. We took a trip to Hawaii. I see that you hurt your leg. Did you have an accident? No. Actually, that happened after I got back. Well, did you enjoy the trip? Well, I will definitely remember it, but not for the right reasons. Really? What happened? Well, well the trip started badly. We got on the plane in Chicago, 
but we had to wait for three hours before the plane finally took off. Why were you waiting so long? It was raining. Oh, I see. Well, that doesn't sound so bad. After the plane took off, a baby sitting behind us started crying. She cried the whole way to San Francisco. We were so glad to finally change planes. That must have been annoying. It was, but the trip got worse. We finally got to Honolulu, but the airline lost our luggage. Oh no, that's terrible. Yeah, they did give us some money to go shopping. While Holly was trying on clothes, someone stole her bag. How awful. Yes, it was. Her wallet, camera, and phone were inside. But we checked into our hotel later that day. It was really nice. Hawaii is a very beautiful place. Did things get better? Not right away. After we relaxed for a while, we went to dinner. We were eating at an expensive restaurant when I bit into something hard and broke my tooth. You must be kidding. No, I'm not. It was very painful. I'm sure it was. Did anything good happen during your honeymoon? Oh, definitely. We hiked on a volcano, we went jet skiing, and we took surfing lessons. So how did you hurt your leg? Oh, that's a funny story. After flying home last week, we went to get our luggage. While I was walking through the airport, I tripped and sprained my ankle. That's terrible. I'm Gina Carver. On today's show, we're talking to Professor Scott Wagner about extreme weather. Professor Wagner, welcome to the show. Thank you, Gina. It's summer now, so let's talk about some extreme summer weather. Hurricanes. Professor, what exactly is a hurricane? A hurricane is a very strong tropical storm. To be a hurricane, a storm must have winds that are 119 kilometers per hour. The winds could be even stronger. Scientists give hurricanes a number from 1 to 5 to describe how strong they are. A Category 1 hurricane has winds from 119 to 153 kilometers per hour. But a Category 5 hurricane has winds over 252 kilometers per hour. Wow! The strong winds must be dangerous. They are. The winds can damage buildings, cars, and trees. Usually there's a lot of rain, so a hurricane could cause a flood. So strong winds and heavy rains are problems. What else happens during a hurricane? When a hurricane reaches land, it could cause tornadoes. Another problem is storm surge. A storm surge is when the hurricane pushes big waves onto land. Sometimes the waves are six meters tall. In fact, in 1900, a hurricane caused a six-meter wave on Galveston Island off the coast of Texas. More than 6,000 people died. That's terrible. Today, we have technology to predict the weather and see hurricanes before they arrive. Do hurricanes occur everywhere in the world? Hurricanes form in the southern Atlantic Ocean and eastern Pacific Ocean. So, people in Japan, for example, don't experience hurricanes? If the storm is in Asia, it isn't called a hurricane, but it could be a typhoon. In the Indian Ocean, a strong tropical storm is called a cyclone. Professor, have you ever been in a hurricane? Yes. Because I study the weather, I've been in several, I was in a Category 4 hurricane last year. You must have been terrified. Well, it was very intense, but we were prepared. My wife was definitely relieved when I got home safely. Professor Wagner, thank you for sharing this valuable information about hurricanes today. This is a great party. Hi, my name's Justin. Hi, Justin. It's nice to meet you. I'm Monica. This is a great party, but I don't really know anyone. Me either. I only know Roberto and a couple of other people. 
So, how do you and Roberta know each other? Oh, we used to be college roommates. What about you? How do you know Roberto? I used to work at the same company. In fact, our offices were next to each other. So, you must work with computers. That's right. I used to work in computer sales. That sounds interesting. Well, not so much. The pay was good, but I used to get really stressed from the job. I was working about 12 hours a day, and I worked almost every weekend. I had to travel a lot, too. I had no social life. That's definitely not good. So, do you still work for the same company? No. Now I sell antiques instead of computers. And I love my new job. I do many of my sales from home over the internet. I have an online store. So, I have lots of free time to do things I enjoy. So far, I'm doing all the talking in this conversation. Tell me a little about yourself. Are you from San Francisco? No. Actually, I grew up in Colorado. Really? My family used to live in Colorado when I was a child. How did you end up here in San Francisco? I moved here after college. I got a job working at a school. What do you do there? Well, I used to teach kindergarten. That sounds really fun. It was, but now I teach middle school. So, how do you like to spend your free time? I love spending time outdoors. When I was younger, I used to spend all summer climbing trees and playing in the yard. Now I go biking and hiking a lot. Oh, I used to love hiking. When I had my stressful job, I didn't have much time, though. Hmm. Maybe we should go for a hike sometime. I'd love to. That's a smart idea. Hi, Brandon. Please come in. Hi, Ellen. So, tell me about the kind of house you want to buy. Well, I'd like your advice. As a real estate agent, you know a lot more about houses and different neighborhoods than I do. I've never owned a home before. Well, I think it's a great idea to buy a home. Tell me some things that are important to you. I want my new home to have at least two bedrooms. That's a smart idea. You'll have help paying the bills if you get a roommate later. What about location? I want a place that's convenient. I'm a fashion designer, so I work downtown. I want to be close to the places I go to a lot. Like the grocery store, movie theater, and restaurants. Well, you'll be close to lots of shops and restaurants if you buy a home downtown. In the center part of the city, most of the homes are apartments. They're also more expensive than apartments in other parts of the city. Okay. What are the suburbs like? Homes in the suburbs are cheaper. But if you live in the suburbs, you'll need to drive a car to work or take the bus. It's too far to walk to most places. But if you live in the suburbs, you could have a house with a yard. That's great if you have children or pets. No, I don't have either of those right now. What about the neighborhood north of downtown, near the university? That's a good area. Many young people live there. If you live near the university, There might be a lot of noise from parties, but there are a lot of bike lanes, so you could ride a bike to work. You could also easily take the bus downtown. Hmm. I don't like the idea of a noisy neighborhood. Is there anywhere else in town that would be good? I think I know the perfect place. There's a nice neighborhood west of downtown. It has townhouses, so you wouldn't have to take care of a yard. It's close to downtown, so you could take a short bus ride to your office. There are nice cafes in the area and even a grocery store, and most of the townhomes have at least two bedrooms. If you think it sounds good, we'll look at some. Great. That sounds good. Please like and subscribe. Eating and drinking. Do you consider eating a chore, a duty, or a pleasure? It's a pleasure. I enjoy trying new foods, savoring flavors, and sharing meals with others. What did you eat yesterday? Was it a typical day? Yesterday, I ate a variety of foods. I had a bowl of cereal in the morning.
At lunchtime, I had a sandwich with turkey. For dinner, I had a pasta dish with vegetables. Overall, it was a fairly typical day. Do you drink juice, tea, or coffee in the morning? In the morning, I usually drink a cup of tea. I find it helps me feel refreshed and ready to start the day. Do you eat at the same time each day? Or do you eat when you have time? I try to eat at the same time each day, but it's not always possible. Do you prefer salty snacks or sweet snacks? How often do you have snacks? I prefer sweet snacks over salty snacks. I have a bit of a sweet tooth, so I enjoy treats like cookies and chocolates. Where do you usually shop for food? What shopping tips can you share? I usually shop for food at the local grocery store or supermarket. Well, make a shopping list and keep an eye out for sales, discounts, and coupons. What drinks do you often have with your evening meal? With my evening meal, I often have water as my primary drink. I find it refreshing and a good way to stay hydrated. What kind of meat do you enjoy eating? I enjoy eating various types of meat. Some of my favorites include chicken, beef, and pork. What is your favorite vegetable? Are you vegetarian? My favorite vegetable is broccoli. I enjoy its crisp texture and slightly nutty flavor. No, I am not vegetarian. What is your favorite fruit? Which fruits do you find delicious? My favorite fruit is strawberry. I love their sweet and juicy flavor. I find several other fruits delicious. Can you name three American dishes that you really enjoy or savor? Cheeseburgers, barbecue ribs, and apple pie. Has your diet changed since moving to the United States? Of course, yes. The availability of different foods here have introduced me to new dishes and flavors. Which dishes from your country would you recommend to a tourist? Biryani is a flavorful and aromatic rice dish that is popular in my country. Is there any food you enjoyed in your homeland that you haven't found here? Yes, there are some foods that I haven't found in the place that I am living now. Are you a chef? No, I am not a chef. I am an English student, focused on improving my language skills. What's your favorite recipe? Where did you get it? One of my favorite recipes is spaghetti carbonara. I got this recipe from my grandmother. What is your favorite restaurant? In what language do you order? My favorite restaurant is a local Italian trattoria called La Dolce Vita. When I order, I usually use English. How often do you eat at a fast food restaurant? I don't eat at fast food restaurants very often. I try avoid it to maintain a balanced and healthy diet. Are American fast food chains popular in your homeland? Yes, brands like McDonald's, KFC, Burger King, and Subway are commonly. In your native land, did all members of your family eat the evening meal together? Yes, it was a common tradition to eat the evening meal together. Who normally cooked the food in your native land? The responsibility for cooking the food was typically shared among family members. In your native country, what foods or drinks are associated with weddings and birthdays? The specific foods and drinks can vary based on regional customs and cultural traditions. What foods or drinks are associated with holy days or national holidays? Panettone, Pandoro, Struffoli, and Colomba are some examples. Have you eaten at a feast? What meals remind you of happy times? Yes, I have eaten at a feast on several occasions. Well, cold cuts, cheese, bread reminds me happy times. Have you ever fasted? Were you famished after skipping two meals? Yes, I have fasted before on certain occasions or as part of cultural or religious practices. Does your religion have dietary rules or restrictions? Yes, my religion does have dietary rules and restrictions. Has there ever been a famine in your native country? What caused it? Yes, it have occurred in my country, most of the time because of war and conflict. Have you ever tried to diet to lose weight? What did you do? Yes, I have. I use an intermittent fasting program. Can you name several types of diets? 
Well, most known are ketogenic, Mediterranean, vegan and paleo diet. Is your diet restricted in any way by health considerations? How? No, it isn't now. But it have been in the past. Do you ever read food labels? Do you have any food allergies? Yes, I normally do and talking about allergies, I'm not allergic to any kind of food. What meals does your family share? Who cooks? Who serves? In my family, we often share three main meals together. Most OT the time was served by my mother. Does your family share recipes? Which recipe would you like? Yes, we often share recipes with each other. Whenever we try a new dish. Are you adventurous in seeking out new culinary delights? Yes, I enjoy trying unique dishes and experimenting with diverse flavors and ingredients. What is your ideal dinner? My ideal dinner would consist of a well-balanced and flavorful meal. Like a refreshing and light salad and grilled salmon filet marinated in a lemon herb sauce. Exploring daily habits. How many hours of sleep do you usually get? Is that enough sleep for you? On average, I usually get around 7 to 8 hours of sleep each night. Do you usually use an alarm clock to wake up? How often do you oversleep? Yes, I use an alarm clock to wake up in the morning. Yes, I sometimes oversleep. What time do you usually get up in the morning? Do you get up with the sun? I usually get up in the morning at around 7 a.m. I don't get up with the sun. Do you jump out of bed? Are you a morning monster? I wouldn't say that I jump out of bed every morning, but I'm also not a morning monster. Can you describe your morning habits? Are you in a hurry? My morning habits generally follow a consistent routine to help me start the day on the right foot. What do you eat for breakfast? What do you prefer to drink in the morning? I often have a bowl of cereal with milk and to drink I prefer a fruit or green smoothie. Can you describe a typical summer afternoon for you? I enjoy embracing the warmth and sunshine by engaging in various outdoor activities. How did you go to school every day? Did you arrive by foot, by bus, or by car? During my school days, I used to go to school by bus. How long is your daily commute to work or school? It's about 30 minutes. What's your daily schedule like? Busy, slow, or full? Some days are busy and packed with activities, while others are slower and more relaxed. What was your daily schedule like five years ago? How is different now? Five years ago, it was likely centered around education. Now, it's more focused on professional activities. Do you do many things at the last minute? Why? Yes, I find myself doing things at the last minute sometimes. In your daily life, what modern appliances or machines do you use? I rely on my cell phone, laptop and microwave to make my life easier. What task or chore have you put off or postponed? Well, I think it is organizing and cleaning my bedroom. In what kind of stores do you prefer to shop for clothes? I prefer to shop in a boutique. Where do you like buying your groceries? Why? I like buying my groceries at a local supermarket because it's near my home. What kind of consumer are you? A bargain hunter? Impulsive buyer? I would describe myself as more of a bargain hunter than an impulsive buyer. What are your TV viewing habits? Do you always watch certain shows? Which ones? My TV viewing habits vary depending on my schedule and interests. I don't always watch TV regularly. How often do you use a computer? When do you send emails? I use it regularly as part of my daily routine. I frequently send emails throughout the day. Do you find the daily lifestyle in the United States hectic? It can be hectic for many individuals, especially in urban areas. What are some dangerous or unhealthy addictions? Well, the substance abuse, gambling, and eating disorders are some examples. Why do you think so many people are addicted to alcohol and illegal drugs? I can be biological factors, social and environmental factors or mental health issues. Do you consider smoking a bad habit? Why? Yes, I consider smoking a bad habit because it's dangerous for the health. 
In what ways are you self-disciplined? In time management, study habits, and healthy lifestyle. Are you lazy in any ways? How? Yes, like everyone, I have moments where I can be lazy in certain ways. Do you tend to see the glass as half full or half empty? Are you more of an optimist or a pessimist? I tend to see the glass as half full, and I consider myself more of an optimist. What is your favorite time of day? Why? My favorite time of day is the evening because it's relaxing. How do your weekends differ from your Monday to Friday routine? Weekends offer a break from the routine of weekdays and allow me to recharge, relax, and enjoy quality time. What are some of your healthier habits? They are regular exercise, balanced diet and stress management. What are some of your less healthy habits? They are snacking on junk food and excessive screen time. How do your habits compare to your parents' habits at your age? My habits at my age are very differ from my parents' habits when they were at the same age. Have your daily habits changed since moving to the United States? Yes, my daily habits have changed since moving to the United States. Given a choice, would you prefer to live now or 100 years ago? Why? If given a choice, I would prefer to live now rather than 100 years ago. That sounds difficult. Joe, let's plan our next vacation. Sure. Where do you want to go, Rebecca? I have three good ideas. I knew that you would. What are they? Well, there's Costa Rica, Tuscany, and Venezuela. Costa Rica is a great place for a vacation. There are a lot of things to do there. Like what? Well, you can climb around Arenal, a big volcano. You can also go hiking in a rainforest. The most amazing animals live there. That sounds interesting. How would we get to Costa Rica? We could fly to the largest city, San Jose. Okay. We could visit Tuscany in Italy. We could ride our bikes. It's the best way to see the area. That sounds tiring. What can we see there? Florence is in Tuscany. It has awesome museums. Some of the most beautiful art in the world is in Florence. Really? But isn't it the most expensive of the three vacations? Well, yes, but it's a very nice place. We can go sightseeing there. And I've never been outside of North America. Okay. Well, tell me about Venezuela. It's a country in South America. Yes, I know that. What can we do in Venezuela? We can visit Angel Falls. It's the tallest waterfall in the world. Is it easy to get there? You fly on a plane from Caracas to Canema in the National Park. Then you get on a boat. You sail on the river. Then you hike through the rainforest to see the waterfall. That sounds difficult. I guess so. Well, Joe, which vacation do you prefer? I want to visit Costa Rica. It's the most exciting place. It's also the least expensive. What vacation do you like? I want to go to Tuscany. It's the most romantic of the three places. I love July 4th. I'm Matthew Wagner, and today I'm at Riverside Mall to find out how people celebrate July 4th, Independence Day, in the United States. Here comes someone now. Hi, what is your name? Ingrid. Ingrid, could you tell me how you usually celebrate July 4th? Sure. I'm from Washington, D.C. In the nation's capital, there's always a big celebration. On July 4th, my family takes the subway to the National Mall. That's not a shopping mall. It's where the Capitol and all the national museums are. When we arrive, we go to a big festival. Each year, the festival celebrates different cultures and traditions. After we attend the festival, we walk to the Capitol building. 
We listened to a concert given by the National Symphony there. When it gets dark out, the fireworks begin. It's an amazing show. Thank you so much for your answer. Enjoy the holiday. Please like and subscribe. Hi there. Could you tell me your name and how you spend Independence Day? Sure. I'm Eddie. Every year, my family goes to the Texas coast for a few days. You can drive right on to the beach and camp there. Before we get to the beach, we buy fireworks. We set up a tent when we get to the beach. Usually, we fish and swim in the ocean. On July 4th, we have a barbecue. Then, at night, we light the fireworks. It's always really fun. That sounds like a great holiday. Thank you, Eddie. Please like and subscribe. Excuse me, could you tell me your name and how you spend time on July 4th? Hi, I'm Ava. I love July 4th. It's my favorite holiday, and it's also my birthday. Really? So, how do you spend this special day? I live in a small town. Before the holiday, everyone decorates with American flags and red, white, and blue banners. On July 4th, people watch a parade on Main Street. We have a picnic lunch after we watch the parade. What kinds of things do you eat? We usually eat things like sandwiches, pasta salad, potato chips, watermelon, grapes, and cookies. That sounds like a great picnic. So, what do you do in the evening? Let's see. In the evening, we go to the park and watch a fireworks show. When I was a child, I thought the fireworks were for my birthday. That's funny. Thanks for talking to me, Ava. How was your summer? Hi, Jen. It's good to see you. Hi, Raphael. How was your summer? It was nice. I went on vacation with my sister Ellen last week. Where did you go? We went to the Florida Keys. No way. So did I. I went there in June. What did you do? We stayed in a nice hotel on the beach. Oh, I didn't. I camped on the beach. I don't like camping. Neither do I. What else did you do? We went to the beach every day. I don't like laying on the beach and doing nothing, but Ellen does. I prefer to do things. So do I. So what did you do? I went swimming in the ocean, but I didn't go scuba diving this time. Neither did I. It's expensive. What did you do? Well, I went sailing. Really? I don't like sailing. I get seasick on boats. Did you do anything else? Yes, I went fishing in the ocean, and I got a bad sunburn. So did I. It still hurts. So what are you going to do this fall? Are you taking classes? No. Neither am I. I'm working. But I want to go on vacation again. So do I. Let's go on vacation together. I like that idea. I want to visit Copper Canyon in Mexico. I don't. I can't speak Spanish very well. Neither can I. Maybe we can take Spanish classes while we're on vacation in Mexico. That's a great idea. Maybe we can take cooking classes, too. That sounds like fun. I will start planning the trip today. I can't wait. Neither can I. What about Frozen? Hey, Tom, what movie do you want to watch tonight? Well, that depends, Nora. Do you mean with the kids or without the kids? Well, I was thinking we could watch one with the kids and then another one after they go to bed. Okay, that's a great idea. Let's see what we can download. I have the list of movies we can download here. Let's look at it together. I know Joey really wants to see the latest X Men movie. It looks like we could get that one. Well, even though it might be exciting, I think that it might be really violent. I don't want the kids to watch it. He will be disappointed, but maybe you're right. 
Anna is too young for it. What about Frozen? Well, Anna will like it, but Joey will be bored. He's too old for animated movies. Okay. What about Maleficent? That might be good for both of them. It's not animated, and this review says it's not too violent. That's a great idea, except I already saw it in the theater with the kids. You did? I'm surprised to hear that. When was that? We went that weekend that you were visiting your sister in Chicago. Oh, that makes sense. Well, let's look for a different action movie. How about Into the Woods? That's a great idea. They will both be excited to see that. Okay, terrific. So we just need to find a movie for us then. Do you want to watch a horror movie? A horror movie? No way. I don't want to be scared. How about a romantic comedy? No, they are so boring. How about a science fiction movie? Okay, maybe. We could watch Interstellar. Didn't you see that in the movie theater with Joey? Yes, but it's one of my favorite movies. I was amazed when I saw it. Okay, great. Then let's watch that. Survey about sports. Excuse me. My name is Laura, and I'm doing a survey about extreme sports and activities for my college sociology class. Can I ask you some questions? Sure. What is your name, and how old are you? My name is John Lee. I'm 24. What kinds of extreme sports or activities have you done? Well, I don't do extreme sports, but I do ride a motorcycle. That's interesting. Do you ride it to work or school, or do you ride it for fun? All of the above. Two years ago, I rode my motorcycle to Las Vegas and then to the Grand Canyon. It was an amazing trip. Do you do any other extreme activities? I am going to go snowboarding with some friends next winter. Cool. Have you ever thought about hang gliding? No. I want to be on the mountain, not fly over it. Excuse me, my name is Laura. Today I'm doing a survey for my college sociology class. Can I ask you some questions? Okay. What is your name and how old are you? My name is Patricia Garza. I'm 22. Do you do any extreme sports or activities? Oh, I love extreme sports. Which ones have you tried? Last summer, I took a trip to St. Lucia, an island in the Caribbean. I went parasailing. I also took windsurfing lessons. Next year, I plan to go scuba diving there. That sounds like fun. Have you ever tried bungee jumping? No, I'm frightened of heights. I'm even afraid of tall buildings. Hello, my name is Laura. I'm doing a survey for my sociology class. Can I ask you some questions? Sure. What's your name and how old are you? My name is Wendy Fleck. I'm 20. Do you do any extreme sports or activities? Well, I prefer reading, but I did go hiking in the mountains once. It was awful. Okay. Have you ever been whitewater rafting? Oh, no. But I might read a book about it.